let's see. A little bit higher. I want to like block it. All right. I think we're good. What do you guys think? Oh, that's not about like move it a little bit to the side. All right, let's go ahead and begin. Thank you, my producers and directors, Alana, Athena, Mia, Mason, and Luna, our dog. <clears throat> so without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, Stephen Thomas, House of Debrief, episode, what did we say? 29. 29. Quantitative Economics and Decision Sciences major from UC San Diego, and uh, 29 years in the business, Orange County native, Capital Valley High School grad, nine kids, I'm an avid runner, and uh, these are my kids. I brought six, my wife brought two, we had them all the time, I adopted her, she adopted mine, and boom, Zeke, he's two, he's taking a nap right now, and uh, just they're just a blast. And I've been all over the place as far as the press is concerned, and so reports on housing, your real, local real estate snapshot, that is my company. I do a housing report for for five Southern California counties. And most reports talk about the sold, closed data, and I'm not into sold, closed data. That's a kind of a reflection of the past. I'm, I'm not very big on uh, taking a look at, the, uh, at something that happened in the months of, this is of course, May closed sales. That would be a reflection of March and April. Uh, that was right in the midst of the pandemic. So May, of course, looks atrocious. And um, a lot of people say we're really busy right now because of the pent up demand uh, during the pandemic. I'm not buying it. Um, I've talked to too many people out in the streets and too many people have way too many buyers out there. So, uh, but I don't like to uh, operate based upon looking at the rear view mirror. Instead, I like to look out the windshield and how do I do that? I looked at, at the active listing inventory. Um, I was away from it for a while because I was on vacation, but then I come back and boom, I'm able to get right into it by looking out the windshield. Active listing inventory supply. The last 30 days worth of pending sales that's the velocity of the market, that is demand. And then I put the two together and we come up with a, a stat called expected market time. So it's all based upon supply and demand. If you place your home on the market, when are you gonna open up escrow down the road? And not a fan of days on market, won't tell you what, what's going on right now. Uh, I, instead, I can tell you as it's getting hotter that the market is getting hotter Average days of market doesn't really give you that flavor. So I can tell uh, what's going on in the marketplace uh, and what you're experiencing based upon those two metrics and then coming up with the expected market time. So uh, it's about setting expectations. That's why I put this report together way back in the day when I was actually representing buyers and sellers. I'd want to set their expectations, so I put together this, this uh, wonderful uh, uh, report. And. I am in all Los Angeles, Orange County, Riverside, San Bernardino, and San Diego counties. And that was the one that went out to San Bernardino, Riverside last week. The one that I did this week is luxury returns. I didn't have enough time to update the slide, but it's luxury returns. And we're going to talk about that at the end of uh, the real estate section. And um, so you go to reportsonhousing.com, you click on subscribe, and there's FAQ and sample report section. You can go ahead and see what the report looks like. Comes out every two weeks. I crunch the numbers on Thursday and then supply the report on, on uh, Monday. San Diego gets there on Tuesdays because I can't put together LA, San Diego, and Orange County all on the same day. It's too much, but it comes out every two weeks. And it's $15 per month or $150 per year. And you get a month free if you sign up using the coupon code luxury, because that's what the latest report is about, luxury returns. And uh, I wanted to thank our wonderful sponsor, that's Escrow Leaders. They, uh, they're good servants. It's their, their slogan is this, we must be good servants to be good leaders. And I know ownership there, and it trickles down from the top, leaders on down. They are great servants, and they are great leaders at Escrow Leaders. And they're an independent escrow company regulated by the Department of Business Oversight. And they have branches in both Orange and Riverside counties. And they are here to serve you. And uh, they have 16 escrow officers and 40 employees. Uh, 
your clients and money are safe with escrow leaders. Many layers of safeguards protect you, your money, your identity. They have uh, and always will continue to meet or exceed industry standards to keep you safe. And they're involved in their industry associations and dedicated to serving the communities. They walk the talk and are actively involved in our community. That's what we talk to our kids about, walking the talk. Do as you say. We, they handle all types of escrows, and uh, they can, so contact them. You can contact them at 949-373-7000. That's 949-373-7000. That's escrow leaders. And so this is uh, my Thomas Bunch once again. And yes, we went on vacation. The older ones didn't go with us, so there was the five youngers that, and uh, the older ones came uh, last Thursday. They stayed the night, had s'mores, all that good stuff, went on a hike, and then went back to their regular life as scheduled. But this is uh, uh, what we've done over and over again. We had so many s'mores, we found that you wanted the thinnest layers of chocolate in order to melt it properly, and we have it down to a science. Um, a couple of them, we, have, we had a couple burned marshmallow casualties. We had so many marshmallows that we just let them, uh, we put them into the fire and they were more kindling. Um, and these are some of the pictures from our uh, RV trip. This was during one of our hikes. And this is cutting up a watermelon. Um, note to self, next time bring an actual knife. I use, I cut this watermelon with a butter knife. But I was able to do it, and everybody had it. We ate this small watermelon, all of us, in one sitting. We just sat there and snacked it all up, ate the whole thing. And it wasn't that big. About yay big. And went on lots of hikes. This is my wonderful wife, and she was actually carrying Ziki on her shoulders. And she's talking to Alana. The reason why I couldn't is because I sprained my ankle on Father's Day. I think I am 20 years old and uh, still able to play soccer. I played soccer with the kids. I have a very, very bad right ankle. So I was wearing an ankle brace, and this time I have sprained my left ankle. So, we're back, went, uh, Father's Day, went on a trip the next day, and I was gimping around. I'm still gimping around, but I'm doing a lot better. And, uh, but, you know, next time, note to self, no more soccer. I'm a, a soccer coach. I want to continue to be a soccer coach. And, just coach. I think that's what we need to do. I need to be sitting on the sidelines. So, look at this. New picture. Because why? It's summer. While we were gone, summer photo fun. Boy, we're in summer. It is summer vacation. That June gloom is still around. Uh, so it's July tomorrow. So all this overcast weather that's continuing to happen it has to be gone by tomorrow. So here's some summer fun photos. I don't think anyone expected that we that when we changed the clocks earlier this year, we'd go from standard time to the twilight zone. <laughs> and I love, the, there's a whole bunch of Kermits that I saw and I, I'm, I'm beginning to think he's like Yoda. When I realize I'm wasting an entire year of my life, but this time it's not my fault. I don't know who needs to hear this, but it's time to fold the clothes you washed last week. <laughs> I do this all the time. Do my do do the laundry and then they sit there in the basket. So Kermit knows. Uh, you can choose not to wear a mask. Then you must also remove all your clothes to enter. It's all or nothing. It's about choices. Thank you to the management. <laughs> I think that's good stuff. In 20 years, when kids ask about the 2020 toilet paper shortage, I'm telling them we had to drag our butts across the lawn in the snow uphill both ways. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. Sounds like my mom. She, always, she grew up in Cleveland. She'd say how she'd have to go up one mile uphill in the snow both ways. <clears throat> so, Southern California market. Let's dive right into it. And yes, it, it might be summer, but it is still the spring market. Ask anybody that's out there that's working in the trenches. It is nutty. I mean, it is. it was like Superman Returns or Batman Returns. And I did that analogy in uh, the luxury returns, and this is the photo that I use, and I do an analogy when Superman dies and Superman comes back to life. And the same thing happened in the real estate market. It just didn't die to the point where we had a buyer's market. It just, everything froze and stopped. And then it came back to life. And I was thinking that luxury would take all of 2020 until 2021 to come back. but. Like the rest of the market, it came back faster than many expected, including myself. I don't think anybody was saying, yeah, it's going to like zoom back. And, but we, we could see it with the numbers. And luxury, too, was coming back pretty darn quick. So it, too, came back. And, uh, but we'll get into that in a minute. 
But I wanted to go over this. This is the uh, the latest as of uh, this morning updating this chart for everybody. And this is Southern California active listing inventory across SoCal. And when I draw a line across, you can see there was only two points, the end of December 27 and the first week of 2018 did we have a lower than we are right now but keep in mind we are in we're at June 30th end of June and when you draw a line across uh, this is this was only for a blip and we always get a low at the beginning of the year kind of like what we did at the beginning of this year and this was a very low level at the very beginning of this year but we've come up and come down and if you look at it June 30th of every year you can see even though this was a low, this is normal for the beginning of the year that you do, that's when you have your lowest level. But when you look at this, we haven't had, oh my gosh, look at that. So this was June of 2013 and actually that's where we are at as far as the active inventory. It is extremely low. It's actually lower than June of 2013. It is the lowest point since I started tracking it in 2012 which shows you, and prior to that, we had higher, higher uh, inventory. So this low inventory is an extremely low amount for Southern California. It's something that I have not seen, have not been able to uh, track prior, and I, I would be scratching my head to, to find something similar to this. We'd have to go back when Orange County was, and LA County and San Diego, San Bernardino, Riverside were just really tiny and small. So, uh, this is not a normal inventory and it is bone dry out there. So speaking of bone dry, this is where we are and this is the spring market and bleeding now into the summer market. Usually when, once we hit the summer market, which is mid-May, you're, you're supposed to go up. And you can see in these prior years, this purple line, it was 2017. And you can see going up at a really slow rate, but still going up. Here we are going down and it's not it's unprecedented that we're going down at this time of the year. As a matter of fact, I'll show you. Last Thursday, we were at 28,230. That was down 5% in two weeks. Last year, we were at 44,379. That is a difference of 57%. That is huge. That is growing. We were here, and it's getting larger. So the difference year over year is getting larger. And then today, I just did a little snapshot to see where we're at. 27,718, that's actually down 2% 2 since last Thursday. So it continues to go down, even though most years, it slowly goes up until you get to the middle of the summer, which is end of July, middle of August. So it's still going down right now, and uh, which is actually not a good thing. I wanna see more inventory on the market because demand is so hot that the only thing that can cool down the how rapid the market is right now in expected market time, the only thing that can cool that down is we'd still have a lot of demand. We just need more homes to come on the market to satiate that demand. So if we have a lot more homes come on the market, it would actually slow the market a little bit, which is where I'd actually like to see it. And I'll show you that what I mean by that in a second. But just for, for uh, people to understand and buyers and sellers and homeowners and everybody out there that in 2007, that was prior. That was at the beginning of the Great Recession, and prior, we had a ton of homes on the market, over a hundred thousand. So, one hundred fifteen thousand. We have twenty-seven thousand seven eighteen, one hundred fifteen thousand back in two thousand seven, and it was like that in two thousand six, seven, and eight, which is why everything crashed and prices crashed because we had too much homes on the market, and the only way to stand out would be to reduce your price. So now we have the exact opposite. We don't have enough homes on the market. So the only way to stand out for a buyer is to improve upon the price. And uh, so the number of new for sale signs in the past four weeks compared to the five year average. So I looked at last Thursday, that four week period, and compared it to, to the five year average. Same exact uh, date frame uh, as far as number of homes coming on the market. And check this out, it's still down. It was 22% two weeks prior, now it's 21%. So still, it is down by a fifth. So we only have, you know, 79% uh, of the normal inventory coming on right now. It's muted. Ugh, it's not changing. That really is disconcerting, especially since I did my Facebook Lives and there was uh, a whole bunch of real estate agents that saw this. I was hoping that, that more people would check this out to see, you know what, this is a good time to place your home on the market. 
because COVID-19 is still absolutely suppressing supply. There are not enough homes coming on the market and it is all because of what's going on with the pandemic of COVID-19. So we do have a supply problem. Usually we have a supply problem, but the reason we have a supply problem is because we're putting everything into escrow, but we're putting on the same number of homes every year. So if interest rates were higher like they were in 2018, we actually, people weren't complaining about a supply problem because we were placing the same number of homes in the market. They just weren't going into escrow as much. So we had a lot more overhang of supply. Now we have fewer homes come on the market and mass demands. The two, those two combined have created a supply problem. Uh, let's see. So, uh, and I know people are going to be asking questions. I'm not going to, uh, I'll answer them in the feed. Go ahead and answer questions. I'll be doing a and a on Friday. And I've actually got this from some agents. In a hot market, there will be houses that even though it is a hot market that you're wondering, scratching your head, what is wrong with my, with my home? And typically when I take a, a look at it from the outside, there's some reason for it. It could be age. It could be the overall feel of the area. It could be yard. It could be the way that the yard is landscaped. It could be the way the yard is hardscaped. There's something about it that is triggering buyers not to pull the trigger to make an offer. So you have to, it's really hard to ascertain what that is without asking agents and agents don't like to give feedback, which I wish it was like mandatory almost that everybody had to give some sort of feedback because it sure would make our industry uh, a lot smoother if we could all give feedback to our sellers. And I, when I was an agent, I used to hound the agents until they would, they would say, leave me alone or they'd give me feedback. And it was back in the days when I would actually fax them a form and have them fax it back. <laughs> That's how long I've been doing this. but. Uh, so it's all about price and finding out what the sticky point is on buyers not purchasing a home when you're in a hot market like we are today. Because the housing market is extremely strong right now. They, we did have a demand problem and it was COVID-19 and everybody didn't buy our lemonade because we didn't know what the heck we were doing. We were wondering if the world was going to hell in the handbasket and then we moved on. We all adapted. Everybody in the real estate industry, everybody's able to adapt now. We all wear our masks. We go fill up our gas tanks. We're wearing masks. We go to the grocery store. We're wearing masks. It's, uh, it's a different world right now. So the real estate industry knows how to put on the proper masks, gloves, social distancing, PPE, all the forms, contracts, everything that needs to be done in order to get a home sold, it is being done right now. And we also have to understand where is this demand coming from? Demand is coming from the housing market being really stable and strong and ready to pop as soon as, and with this low inventory that I've been talking about since the very beginning of COVID, that we have a very, very low inventory. And sure enough, once everybody started looking at, hey, look at these interest rates, because mortgage interest rates is ruling the day. And uh, last Thursday, it was flat. It was at 3.13%. That is the record. It's been hanging at that record for, uh, for two weeks now. And we'll just have to see where it's at as of this Thursday when they, the new surveys come in as to where, where we are at uh, uh, mortgage-wise. But at a 3% interest rate, that is rocking interest rate. All-time low. When you do the math and all that stuff, it just saves you a lot of money. So buyers are going, I want to buy right now because they've done the math. The math looks good. So, uh, and then the 10 year treasury is bouncing right around this rate uh, below 0.7 and that's low. That's extremely low. So it being that, that low and it's because there's still a lot of uncertainty as to where we're going. Plenty of uncertainty. Any negative news drives this thing to remain where it's at and I don't see positive news on the horizon. Uh, but understand that these low mortgage rates with the kind of housing market we have with very uh, few homes on the market, it is absolute rocket fuel and it is absolutely propelling us forward. So COVID-19 may be suppressing the supply side of the equation, but it's not on the demand side of the equation. A lot of us are living in our homes and we're saying, man, I could use an office. Man, I could use a bigger yard. Man, I want a pool. I want a three car garage. We could hang out in the garage. I want a longer drive. There's a lot of different things that, that go into our, our, uh, uh, our 
a need to to buy a home and a lot of people are doing a lot of self-analysis I mean if you're living in a smaller like two-bedroom uh, condo there's not a lot of places to go this is where you might go man I want to I want something a little bit different and that's where we're getting this velocity from in my opinion that's part of what's feeding it besides the low mortgage rates low mortgage rates entices it to happen further so uh, I haven't shown you this chart, and I've never done this in one of these, but the reason for it is because, gosh, look at that demand. We fell, this demand fell all the way down to here, and that was low, right? This is COVID-19 lockdown. This was a level that we had not seen, and this was during spring. This, typically, it's at the beginning of the year, you get these low points. This was the beginning of this year, 2020. Then we went up, and then we came back down. This was COVID-19 mid-April. Looked awful, right? But look at where we're at right now. If I draw a yellow arrow, isn't that a beautiful drawing? And that's my yellow arrow. You can see where demand is. I draw a line across. Holy cow, we have not had this kind of demand since 2012. That's a long time ago. So it even beat 2013's demand. That's how hot things are right now. So if you look at this, this is beyond a V-curve right now. This is getting uh, crazy as far as I'm concerned. This is nutty. So the only thing that can help slow this, the, the demand is here, and this demand, I don't know how long this is going to last, but I think it's going to be through the summer, and then once kids go back to school, things will go into place, won't get demand to come down a little bit. But this is what happened in the last two weeks. Still up, not at the same velocity as earlier, but still, this is a pretty huge velocity on the upward side. And if you look at this, last Thursday, we're at 20,155 pending sales in the last 30 days. That's the velocity of the market. That's demand. It's up 11% in two weeks. Last year, we were at 16,605 at the same time. That's 18% less. That's the orange line. This green line, this was 2017, was a good year. We're, I like green, what am I pointing to? Purple. This purple line, 2017. And yeah, that was a hot year, if you remember back to 2017. I know it's hard to remember three years ago, but 2017 was a hot year and we're surpassing that and we're in summer. And uh, that's just, when I look at this thing, it's just, it's absolutely amazing. It shows you that our spring market has moved and it's going to take up uh, uh, the entire summer market. So April 16th, we were down at 8,252. That was down here. See, look at that, that's 59% less. We're at 20,000. We were under 10,000. We were 8,252 on April 16th. That's the highest level of demand. If I go backwards, looking backwards, I have never seen demand this high since July of 2012. And it's continuing to go up, so it's going to compete with 2012, which was a very, very hot year. It was the beginning of everything coming out. And if you remember back to 2012, these are really solid deals, solid escrows. In 2012, a lot of the demand, when we compare it, was filled with short sales and foreclosures. A lot more short sales because it was the latter end of that great recession that's coming out. When I was doing an analysis of, of how many short sales there were, it was a big portion of the market and short sales took forever to close and it was just, it, they, they go into escrow, they fall out. So the demand was, when I do the last 30 days with the pending sales, they fall out and they go back in. It kind of, it kind of uh, it makes those numbers look a little bit higher than, the, than they really are. This is really, really strong because it's not filled with short sales and distressed and all that stuff. Oh, no, not, that's not today. Erase that. I don't know why I forgot to delete it. But anyway, Southern California expected market time year over year. It, this is where we're at. Once again, man, we're getting below, we're getting towards this 40 day mark. Once you get into the 30s, that is what I call the nutty range. It is nutty out there. Last Thursday, we were at 42 days. That was down seven in two weeks, so it was down a week. So it was at 49, and then it came down to 42 days. So the expected market time right now, if you place your home on the market, is 42 days for all of Southern California as a whole. And uh, SoCal on April 16th was at 109 days. And that was just a balanced market, not a buyer's market. In order to be at a buyer's market, you have to be above 120. In order to be into a deep buyer's market where you're actually giving up value, you have to be above 150. And you can see, not playing there. We were there for a hot minute, and that was at the start of 2019, end of 2018, and that's when we had 5% interest rates. So that was what caused that, that, that uh, weird calamity, and this was, that's the green line where the expected market time just kept growing, and that's because interest rates kept on going higher and higher. So, but this, this was COVID-19, and then people figuring it out, and then boom. 
SoCal last year was at 80 days. We're at 42 days right now. It's the lowest level at 42 days since I've been tracking it in 2012 for all of Southern California. Ugh, that's nutty. That's really nutty. Nuts. I just want everybody to know. I know. If you're in the marketplace, so buyer, seller, real estate agent, mortgage broker, you're doing a lot of work. And for buyers that are not having a lot of success finding a home because they're one of 10 offers and only one get it. The other nine have to go back to the drawing board. LA County's had a 51 day expected market time. That was down eight in two weeks. Orange County's at 48 days, down 11 in two weeks. Riverside County's at 36 days. That's down eight. And I want you to know when it says 30s, remember what I said, that's stupidly hot. San Bernardino, 33 days. This is the most ridiculous market, 33 days. And San Diego's at 37 days, ridiculously hot. San Bernardino, just off the charts, ridiculous, hard to even operate in that. That's where you get sellers that when they get 10 offers, they go, man, I think I could have got more, which is not the case. And then, not a buyer's market. I'm so sorry. Instead, I know so many people were hoping for a buyer's market, so values would come down. Instead, we have a very, very hot seller's market. Anything below 60 days is a hot seller's market. And if we go back to there, you can see everything well below 60. And the lower that number gets, the hotter the market, the more you get actually appreciation. And uh, so everything in LA, Orange County, Riverside, San Bernardino, San Diego, hot. And it is literally like fishing with nets for many, many homes. You're just throwing out the net and you're reeling in multiple buyers. So it's not taking that, that long. If it is taking long to sell your home, it, there is something intuitively wrong with it and it's up to the professionals, it's up to the uh, sellers, homeowners to figure out what it is. It's typically not the fact that there's a lack of marketing or anything like that. What could it be? Could it be that my house smells like a dog, looks like a dog, or it needs some work here, or it needs paint, but I didn't really want to do it, it needs carpet, it backs up to a busy road, it backs up to a, a slope with the water tower above it. I don't know, there's electrical lines nearby, there's so many different things that we can take a look at to see exactly what it is that's keeping buyers from, from purchasing. And um, I understand, it is hard, this is crazy. I understand, buyers. I totally sympathize with you. I'm actually rooting for more homes to come on the market. I'm actually rooting for the market to slow down. I don't like how frenzied the, the market is right now. It is just absolutely crazy. This is it. New home comes on the market. This isn't proper social distancing. Nobody's wearing a mask. No bueno. So let's put more homes on the market. That's it. Attention homeowners. Come on. Let's go right now. Right now, you, technically I say you have till July 31st. We're in a different story. I think we have all summer to uh, place your home into escrow and get things going that people are willing to adapt and and because uh, a lot of schooling can be done online and all that stuff. So there's a lot that can be done. So I think that we're gonna have a, a, a busy elevated demand and expected market time really low all the way through summer. So we'll just have to see. And a lot of it has to do with new homeowners coming on the market. So. Just so I know, I get it. A lot of people think, hey, Stephen, it's a recession. I don't like to call it a recession as a pandemic because it was led by the pandemic, not one certain uh, industry or facet of the economy. Instead, the pandemic led this forced lockdown and has caused this recession. So, and I get it. So many people were saying, hey, it's a recession. Shouldn't it equal home values coming down? No, that doesn't mean recession does not equal home values coming down. Recession, buyer's market. They don't necessarily go together. They do go together when real estate leads the day, which we did in the Great Recession, where real estate, we did lots of dumb things as an industry, you know, subprime, you don't really have to qualify a loan. Here, fog this mirror, okay, you got this loan, $1 million, and they don't have the income to support that. I mean, those were the things that were going on. Dogs were getting escrow, I mean, they're getting houses. My dog Luna could have got a house. She's only five months old, so. She can't get a house anymore. You actually have to qualify for a loan. That's why we're in very, very strong footing. And this was the savings and loan scandal. So those are the two areas where we actually gave up values during a recession. So just because we're in the midst of this pandemic does not mean that home values will come down. And I've seen 
there are right now there are forecasts all over the board as to what's going on with home values. I can tell you what's going on right now based upon all my stats, home values are going up. And the only reason why I know that is because we're getting down towards the 30s. And once you get down to the 30s, it is crazy to be a uh, buyer and, it's, and sellers are getting a crazy amount of activity. And it really boils down to the supply and demand. So if you really want to understand what's going on in supply and demand, we have a very, very low supply, very, very uh, high demand. I've done it before. I've talked about Cabbage Patch dolls. And when you want a Cabbage Patch doll and there's none on the shelves, what, what do you do? You race to the store and you're waiting in line like we saw that picture and you rush in there to get your Cabbage Patch doll because the shipment just came in. I remember. I remember being a kid and my dad going to, I think it was Jimco, to get Cabbage Patch doll. That ages me, by the way. For all of you millennials that don't know what a Jimco is, you might have to Google that. <laughs> housing is strong. The fundamentals of the housing stock are strong. There's a lot of nested equity. There's a lot of great things about housing. That's why it is going to be the beacon of hope for our economic turnaround eventually. eventually. So, uh, and I get it, buyers were wanting this to come down. They wanted values to come down, but that is not going to happen. It's just absolutely not. And I'm going to go over this uh, real quick, this market overview. This is why you need to subscribe to the report. San Bernardino Riverside, you get yours next week. San Diego, you get yours uh, tonight. And uh, for Riverside, can't, uh, did I miss one? LA and Orange County got theirs Orange last County. night. Here we go. And this is breaking down, so I'm only doing LA, San Diego, and Orange County. I'm going to do this really quick just to show you where we were. And you don't have to look at all these different price ranges. I would like to point out a couple of them. Check out this. During the height of COVID-19 lockdown, 3 to 4 million in, in LA County, it was at a 1,055 day expected market time, which means there was no activity. I remember it was less than 10 went into escrow in all of LA County. So when you have that and you have a lot of homes on the market, you get a 1,055 day expected market time. You can't do that with the average days on market. You can do that based upon the velocity, demand, and the amount of supply. So that's why you're getting no activity. And now look at it, 135 days. And if you look at this, so I did this for each of the different price ranges and LA goes from 1.5 million up. But if you look at this, this is uh, 138 days. This should say 6 million plus. 138 days. Um, is uh, today and that beats the prior best for 2020 which is 155 days and last year was at uh, 209 days at the same time period and uh, the best for 2019 was 182 so I'm gonna here to tell you that 138 days is quite incredible and it's way better than I thought we would be so I'm trying, I'm scratching my head wondering kind of where all this is coming from because you could say low mortgage rates are part of it and the fact that the, uh, the stock markets come back most of the way, but I, I am really struggling to figure out, okay, why is this, this happening? So I'm interested, curious, you can post uh, so that you can give me your feedback as to what you, you're hearing from your buyers as to what they want. Maybe they want the same exact thing. And this is what I surmised in my report, that they want that office. They want that extra little nanny suite. They want the uh, more room. They want the bigger backyard. They want the pool. And Southern California is the place to be. I don't want to be cooped up someplace else. So maybe that is what is driving a lot of this. And this is Orange County. Same thing in 111 days. 121 days was the prior height for 2020. They were at 322 days. Look at last year at this time, 217. And the best for 2019 was 161, Orange County on fire. They were at 1,118 for 4 million plus for COVID-19 height. Now they're at 239 days for 4 million. Anything under a year for 4, for 4 million plus is exceptional. I, as a matter of fact, I went back, saw the number of 4 million plus because I have Orange County going back to 2012. I have never not 2012, 2004, I have never seen this many homes above 4 million sell that's in escrow currently right now today. It's uh, kind, of, kind of unbelievable. It's almost double what I've seen before. So, and this is San Diego County. They're at 107 days right now. 118 was the prior height. They were 316 in the middle of COVID-19 in mid-April. 207 last year, same time. 166 was the best in 2019. This is the story for all of the five counties that I track. And I get it. Real estate appraisals are really hard to do right now. 
And I've heard that uh, we've had uh, we've had buyers and sellers that have had to negotiate. Some uh, some people have put into the offers that they'll waive the appra appraisal and that they, they have this money set aside just in case that happens. And there are some sellers that have come down in value in order to match the appraisal. It's all been this negotiation. There have been appraisal issues. And people go, Stephen, there are appraisal issues that are out there right now. I heard this all the time. I heard this in, in 2012. I heard this in 2013. I heard it in uh, again in 2017. That was a very, very hot year. I kept on hearing these appraisal issues and it happens every single time we have an extremely hot market where we're well below 60 days and once we start getting into the into the where we're at those 30s that's where it's so crazy that appraisers are going i don't really have much to go by other than the fact that you have a flood of people willing to pay that value so uh they don't have a tremendous amount of comps my suggestion is you subscribe to the housing report send them my report so that they understand exactly what's going on in the marketplace uh, I do have appraisers that are actually uh, subscribers of the report to help uh, them understand what's going on. So I do have to talk about COVID-19. I don't know what happened while I was gone. I went on a vacation and the next thing you know, COVID-19 numbers going through the roof. And it's not just the younger, uh, the younger population being infected. That's not what it is because you have to look at hospitalizations and things like that. You have to track all that stuff and it's just absolutely not pretty right now. Um, worldwide, we're at 10 point, almost 10.4 million. United States, of course, number one. Brazil is a real bad spot. They're almost at 1.4 million. They got there fast, really fast. And the whole wide world, this is where we're at. I'm doing the average number per day is 172,000. This is the one week average. So it's a seven day moving average. It just keeps on going up. That's what this chart is, is the seven day moving average. We're adding 172,000 right now. And this is the United States at 2.6 million. And you look at this, look what happened while I was gone. I told you this was gonna happen. It did while I was gone. LA is now number two. They passed up Cook, Illinois. I didn't know if they were going to way back when, easy to say now. They're number one most populous county in the United States. And now, uh, uh, you know, New York was at 215,000 confirmed. LA is at 100,000 right now. They just surpassed the 100,000 mark. And uh, we'll have to see what happens with Los Angeles because it's not good, the number of new cases that, that, are, that we're hitting right now. And we're into the summer months. And remember, this virus is supposed to go away with the heat in the summer months. Another concern of a lot of people is the fact that it's not cooperating like that. And uh, you look at the United States and gosh darn, they even covered it up. That's terrible. You know, I can actually fix this really quick so that you can actually see it. And that's the beauty of doing a Facebook Live. I am going to, oops, I am going to fix this live because I want you to see these charts. They, they really do tell the proper story and I covered up what's going on. There we go. Fixed and we're back. By the way, that's a picture of Greece, one of my favorite places. That's where I honeymooned with my wife. I can't wait to go back. If anybody wants to buy us round trip tickets to Greece. We're not going anytime soon. Um, next year. <laughs> <laughs> My producer and director got back from the grocery store and she told me we're not going anytime soon. So, you can go ahead, uh, yeah, just instant message me. We would love to go back to Greece. And we have uh, a very good friend of my wife's in Greece too. She would love for us to come back there as well. That was what that one picture was while you were waiting. Anyways, the United States, I had to move this because what happened while I was gone? Seriously. Because we were averaging, and I remember when we were averaging right above 30,000, I remember this time frame, and this is where we were all going, we're mid-April going, oh my gosh, or this was uh, April, and then we got towards May, and then things got better, right? Now we're averaging 39,750 for the last week. That is the average number of new cases per day and it's going the wrong direction. This is not pretty, and I'm sure you've seen some where they show United States versus versus a Europe, and Europe looks like this, and they're back down here. And now the European nations don't want us to visit them. I don't blame them. That's an issue. I don't want them infecting my public. So we have a problem here. We don't look like the rest. It's like we're, we're gonna do our own thing. And instead, this is our own thing. This is not the way we want to be as, as a country, I think, personally. And, and it has nothing to do with being political or anything like that. I don't want people to die. 
and people uh, right now are filling up hospitals. And I didn't have enough time to go through all the different things, but I know hospitalizations is way up. Riverside and San Bernardino are having a real issue. I was talking to my wife about it. Uh, Riverside County has three intensive care units left, and they're they're going to add more because they have other uh, they have uh, other ones that are available. Uh, you know other rooms that they can convert to ICUs. San Bernardino is right behind them with an issue. LA and Orange County are bigger and same with San Diego so they have the ability to expand and they have still have ICU beds but it doesn't matter they're filling up with people that are really sick which means that if they're filling up with people that are really sick when are you going to see the the death counts go up? That's down the road. So and it's nothing that we're, we're, we're rooting for. I love the fact that University of Washington did this, and I think that we should all get on board with this. This has nothing, I'm pretty sure this has nothing to do with being uh, a Democrat or Republican. This is called health. All this is health tracking. And this is what, they, they've done this thing where they talk about daily infections and testings. So this was the daily infections and testings, and you can see this is where we're at right now. And uh, this is the estimated infections. But if you look over here, this is where we're at right here, right? They say if we start all using masks right now, 100%, this is what's going to happen. The daily infections is going to go way down. That's what it's going to do. It's going to absolutely uh, drop off. And so, and this is with proper easing. Uh, these are all projections because we're starting to ease things a little bit. And then this is the daily deaths. Daily deaths is going here and it will stay at this level for quite some time and then in September, uh, October is supposed to go up. They've actually eased this and said it's going to be a little bit later. Who knows? They keep on uh, retracing this a little bit. But this is masks. This is what happens to deaths is everybody wears masks. I like that trend line. Does anybody like this trend line? Uh, even Luna, my dog, is raising her hand, her little paw. My wife is raising it high, Mia's here, I have three. Two people and a dog. They're all raising it. I'm raising my hand. I don't want to see people die. Does anybody want to see people die? I don't think it has anything to do with red or blue. Can I, you make a clarification? Somebody said maybe correlation of infections with protest crowds, but they've proven that's not true. Yeah, and, and I've heard that too. Correlation of, of uh, protest crowds. And that's not where the infections are coming from because if you look at all the protests that have gone on, most of them, most of everything you see, everybody's wearing masks. They've said actually quite the opposite, that because they were all wearing masks, it's really been, it's shown that it really, really does help. That's why they're saying it helps so much that this is what we need to do. There was a, I can't remember if it was Georgia, I can't remember if it was Tennessee, someplace over there, there was a two hairstylists that were wearing masks and they had COVID-19 and the patrons were wearing masks. So everybody had to wear masks. They had, they had COVID-19. They ended up, two of the hairstylists, they ended up having to contact 112 uh, different people. And the, out of those 112 people that got tested, guess how many got COVID-19? Zero, because everybody was wearing a mask is what they're, what they're thinking. There was a bar, ah, I can't remember what it is. Which, where was that bar that I told I you about? Remember. I don't remember, it was so late. It was the last thing I looked at before I went to bed. I probably shouldn't be looking at negative news right before I go to bed, but there was a bar that was open and there was 100 infections because of the, the close proximity of all these people in the bars. That's where we have the problem. It's not, not have, wearing masks. it's not wearing masks. I mean, good, bar it up, but it's very hard to drink a lot of alcohol and dance around with masks on, so people just don't. And the more that you drink and all that stuff, I'm pretty sure the more that, that mask starts hanging. Have you seen those people walking around? They look like this. With their nose hanging out? That's not properly wearing a mask. Wear your mask properly and we see this. And then we, we see this too. This is US COVID-19 test results per day. Gosh, while I was gone, dumb things were happening. Remember when I talked about we want to be at 5% and we got below 5% and it looked like the, then all of a sudden it started to change when I was leaving and then I left and then we're well above 5%, 6.4%. This means that out of all of the testing we do, the number that are coming up positive is rising. So we're, we're only testing a certain amount and that's because like in Texas, there's a whole bunch of people that want tests and they, they have to wait in super long lines in order to get tested right now. There's not enough tests. And that was what everybody was talking about. There was a point where, where way over here when we started this, where 20% of all tests, 20, 25% of all tests were actually positive, which means we were only testing people that we thought were positive. So 
that, that, that's not good when you have 20% means that you can't get a test, you can, you can get a test because you have symptoms, you have a test, and then one out of every four would come out positive. So that's not good. So now we're, we're getting down to one, uh, five, five percent, which is one out of every 20, and it was getting lower. It got down to like 4.3%, it was going low. That was all the way down over here. And then all of a sudden it's going up again, and which means that out of all the people we're testing, more are coming back positive, which means we're not testing enough. Now I've heard, and my own, I think that we need to be above 700, about 750,000. CDC Fauci thinks we need to be like a million tests per day. Per day. Right now we're not doing that. We're, the most ever was while I was gone, 637,000 tests, 569,000 yesterday. That's not enough testing. We need to see testing where it's at 750,000. It needs to be up here minimum. And this is where the experts, maybe we should go with the experts, right? They think we need to be up here. Does that look like we're doing enough testing? That's a big white gap. I don't like the white gap. We just need to do more testing, wear our masks, figure out where people are, where they're sick, and get them isolated. It's that easy. Sounds easy. But uh, we need to do something like that. We need to be mindful of that. That's not red or blue. Wear your mask. Let's increase the amount of tests. This is California. I told you this curve doesn't look like anything like Europe, where Europe went up and down. California, we're one of the problems. Texas is one of the problems. Florida is one of the problems. It seems to be all the southern belt. And it's where it's supposed to be hotter. So we know that heat doesn't have much to do with this, right? And they actually said that the original, something I just read, China's original strain, now the thing has, I guess it like changes over time. And it's changed and now it's more infectious. So that's something that I was just reading while I was putting all this stuff together. That's not good. So California, this is not the number of to to total, so let's not do that. Uh, 5,554 is how many we're adding per day right now. 5,554. California County cases, this is stacked from the worst to the, uh, you know, from the most infected on. And that's all Southern California. LA hit 100,000. Riverside County is at 16,600. San Diego County is at 13,800. OC is at 13,000. San Barbara, San Barbara, seriously. San Bernardino is at 12,500. And uh, you can see that there, these are where a lot of issues are. Imperial County is one of the worst. And a matter of fact, they went back to a lockdown in Imperial County. So, uh, that they have uh, a lot of uh, farms that are there. So they have people that have been continuously working on farms. And I'm sure it's kind of like the meat packing industries that we've heard about in the Midwest. Same issues, that they're all working in close proximity and they're getting each other sick and going home and their loved ones are getting sick. And so when are we gonna unlock this thing properly? It's wear a mask. You put on your seatbelt every day, well, then wear a mask. It should be that simple. You shouldn't go anywhere without wearing your seatbelt. You shouldn't go anywhere without wearing your mask. And here's this where I got my mask, reports on housing mask, that puppy. And you can get it here at allovershirts.com. There are others that are out there. I think other people have shared it, but I'm just sharing the one that I got mine at so that you can go get yours. You can put your logo all over it and you can dance around the streets and everybody know you do a little advertisement. If you need to, you need to find a home, do something, do something fun. So uh, go to reportsonhousing.com. You click on subscribe. I know I didn't stick a lot of economic stuff at the end because in the interest of time, I just wanted to go everything properly and wanted to go over kind of what the issue is because we have to fix the coronavirus issue. We need to be mindful. We need to start wearing masks. It's time to like put all the little, th uh, our guns down and just say, let's all wear masks, period. Not a political issue. That's why I wanted to focus on that because if this thing goes to hell in a handbasket, all economy goes to hell in a handbasket. We get what's called a W-shaped recovery. Nobody wants that, right? Nobody wants the, where we're starting to come back right now. Real estate's way back. We definitely don't want real estate to come back down. So we all need to be mindful and wear our masks and do the proper social distancing and just be mindful. There's a killer out there and it's invisible. So we don't know where it's at. We don't know if we've got it. So let's all wear one to protect each other. I like you and you guys are all my friends out there. So I'm gonna wear it just in case I infect you. That's it. That's, it's that simple, I care. So go to uh, reportsonhousing.com, click on subscribe. You get a month free. Coupon code is luxury. Because luxury is back. 
luxury returns. Uh, and then you get sample reports. And thank you, escrow leaders. We must be good servants to be good leaders. Just absolutely love that. And they're an independent escrow company regulated by the Department of Business Oversight branches in both Orange and Riverside counties. They're here to serve you. They have 16 escrow officers, 40 employees. Your clients and, and money are safe with escrow leaders, and they have many safeguards and protections to protect you, your, your clients' money. And they're involved in their industry associations and dedicated serving the communities. They walk the talk. That's what we tell the kids. You know what? Just don't tell me you're sorry. You don't change your behavior. So we walk the talk and are actively involved in our community. Right, Mia? We handle all types of escrow. So escrow leaders handles everything out there under the sun. Contact them today. 949-373-7000. 949-373-7000. And that's it. That's all I have for you. On Friday, we'll be doing a Q&A at the end. So thank you very much for joining me. I appreciate it. I'm going to shave this off. I just wanted to show you that, yes, I can grow a big, gray, ugly beard. But most of all, Zeke doesn't like me tickling him like I normally tickle him on the neck when I have this thing. He started crying the other day. So <laughs> I need to shave it off because I have too many kids that need tickled. So there, thank you very much. We'll see you on Friday. Stay safe out there. Wear a mask. Thank you much.